Are you stuck working at home, but you still need access to the file shares on your office computer? Well, I'm gonna show you how to set up a private VPN for free. Stay tuned. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Now essentially all it is, is you're creating a tunnel between the computer that you're on and the computer that you're trying to connect to. And this tunnel essentially makes you part of the same network. It's as if your computer was connected to the same local network as the computer that you're connecting to. Now there's many benefits to this. One of the benefits is that you can have access to all of the network resources on the computer that you're connected to, like file shares, shared printers, and things of that nature. Now that network will also have access to the shares on your own computer. For instance, if you're actually using a program like TeamViewer to remote into your office computer, you can actually share your home printer with your office computer and you can print through the VPN to your home computer. Another benefit to a VPN is that all of your internet traffic is actually routed through the tunnel to the network that you're connected to. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi connection, all of your internet is actually encrypted and sent through the tunnel so you can't be spied on. That's definitely a good benefit. Now today, I'm not gonna show you how to use a regular VPN service. There are services out there that can actually route your traffic and secure your traffic for you. And the usefulness of those is actually limited because all it's doing is concentrating on your internet traffic itself. The goal that we have today is to be able to share network resources with the computer that we're connecting to. And I'm gonna do that by connecting my notebook through my cell phone just simply tethering it. So that way, if I were to go on vacation, I could easily have access to the file shares on my file server. Now to set it up, it's really easy. What we're gonna be doing today is setting up a simple Windows 10 PPTP connection. Now PPTP is a protocol that Microsoft created um, ages ago. It's had security issues in the past. However, it's a little bit better now. There's still some issues now, but we'll go over them later in the video. For now, let me show you how to set it up. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up the VPN from the computer that's gonna be accepting the connections. Now this should be from a desktop computer. I wouldn't recommend doing this from a notebook. And the reason is is because this computer actually has to stay on. It has to be turned on in order to accept the connection that you're making to it. So I would recommend doing it from a desktop. So if you have a desktop in your office or at your home, depending on where you wanna make this connection, that's the computer I would set the VPN up on. So now let's get started. If we go down to here, we click on our network connection and we're gonna to wanna to click on network and internet settings. And then from there, we wanna click on the network and sharing center. And then from there, we wanna click on change adapter settings. And this should open up our adapter settings for our ethernet. If we had a Wi-Fi card, it would be on here also. And what you wanna do is push the alt button so you can get your menu up top and you wanna to go to file and you wanna connect on new incoming connection. And then from here, what you wanna do is, I wouldn't recommend using your regular user profile here. I would add a user profile at this point. So you click add someone, and then we're just gonna make up a name. I'm gonna write in VPN client. And then for the full name, just write VPN or whatever you want. And now the password, this is important to make an extremely secure password. And we're gonna go over this later on in the security section of this video, but I would highly recommend the most secure password possible. Um, even if you wanna use a password generator to generate an extremely difficult alphanumeric password, that's what I would do here. I'm gonna enter my password in now and then we will go on from there. All right, so once you have that one client selected, make sure you don't have any of the other ones selected here because essentially what you're doing right here is these are going to be the usernames that are gonna have access to the VPN connection. So you really don't wanna use any of your personal accounts here because honestly the passwords on those accounts probably aren't as strong as you're gonna to wanna to make your password for your VPN connection. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. You wanna make sure to check to connect through the internet. If this isn't checked, go ahead and check it now. Then hit next again. 
And now here is asking you which protocols you want to use. I wouldn't recommend using IP version six. I would go IP version four at this point and make sure you turn on file and print sharing and your packet scheduler here. And then for the internet protocol IP four, you're going to want to go ahead and hit properties here. And then what we're going to want to do is we want to specify the IP addresses that the incoming computers are going to have available to them. This is going to be the, the local IP address that the client computer is actually actually going to use as part of your network. So it's going to have to be an IP address within the range of IP addresses that you're currently using. So you're going to have to log into your router and look at what the DHCP server currently has and make sure to pick a pool of IP addresses that are outside of that. So for instance, if your router's IP addresses start at 100 and go up to 200, then go ahead and either pick a grouping of IP addresses that's under 100 or over 200, wherever it fits outside of the DHCP server of your router. You don't want to conflict with your router's DHCP server or you could start to have problems within your internal network. So I know that my IP addresses actually stop at 200. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit 192.168.0.201 and it's gonna to go to, we're gonna say 10. And this will give us 10 clients that can connect. You can make this number as small or as big as you want in order to allow in more connections or less connections. Like for instance, if you were gonna go 05, it would only allow five people to log in. You may want to give yourself a couple extra just in case, but for the most part, you have to have at least the number of computers that are going to be connected. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then we're going to push allow access. And at that point, it's going to create the connection. We can hit close now. And you can see right here, our incoming connection is ready to accept clients. Now, at this point, you need to set up your router. And to set up your router, unfortunately, there's not a lot of help that I can give you on that because all routers are different. Um, my router is a completely different router than what most of you are probably using. So what you're gonna wanna set up is two things inside your router. You want to set up a reservation for your VPN server so that it gets the same IP address every time it logs onto the network. You can also do a static IP if you want to, but I honestly don't like static IPs, so I set up reservations for all the computers that I need to have a static IP. And that way, all of your IP addresses are actually organized in one area. You don't have to go to different computers to try to figure out if they have a static IP or not. So it's easier to set up a reservation reservation within your router so that that computer gets the same reservation every single time it logs on. And it does that through its MAC address. So I would highly recommend doing that instead of setting a static IP on the computer itself. The second thing that you have to do is set up port forwarding from port um, 1723, that's the PPTP port. And that port right there is actually going to be the port that's gonna allow the VPN connection to go through your network to the computer that it's connecting to. So you wanna make sure to forward that port 1723 to the IP address of the computer that's accepting the VPN connections. And once you get that set up, then we can move on to set up the client. And let's do that right now. Okay, so from the client computer, you're going to go down into your network connection here. And what you're going to want to do is you want to select network and internet settings here. And from there, you want to go ahead and hit VPN. And here's where we're actually going to add our VPN connection. So we click add a VPN connection. For VPN provider, we're going to want to choose the Windows built-in VPN. And then the connection name, you can name it anything you want, just something so you'll know what you're connecting to. This is really only relevant if you have more than one VPN connection. So we're going to write, I'm just going to name mine VPN. Now, server name or address. The IP address that you're going to use for this VPN is going to be your external IP address. This is the IP address that you get from your internet service provider. Now, if you have a static IP address at the location you're trying to connect to, then it's no problem. You can just enter in the static IP address and you shouldn't have an issue. However, if you have like a home internet connection or a connection that has a dynamic address that changes often, whenever the IP address changes, you're going to lose access to your VPN. In order to make those work, what you're going to have to do is set up a DDNS service. And what this does is it's a dynamic DNS service that actually will 
keep track of what your IP address is, and it will give you a little web address that you can go to in order to access your IP address. And that's outside of the purview of this video, so you can just search Google for it. It's, it's They're really easy to set up, and there's lots of different providers that provide them. I may do a video in the future showing how to set up a DDNS address, but for now, I would just search for it, and you should be able to knock it out. Either way, what you're gonna to wanna to do is whether it be a dynamic DNS service or a static IP from your internet, Internet provider that's what you enter in this menu right here so let's do that now okay so I'm gonna go ahead and enter my IP address here and then for VPN type what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to select point-to-point -point tunneling protocol PPTP and then from there we want to select username and password and then for the username and password this is where we want to enter in that username that we set up before when we were on the VPN server so that's gonna be VPN client and then you're gonna enter in the password that you set up there. Again, this needs to be an extremely strong password. 1234 is not acceptable in this case. And then once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, what we're gonna do is in order to test this VPN, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on tethering on my phone and we're gonna connect my notebook to my phone and we're gonna see if we can connect to it. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, now that I'm connected to my phone, all you have to do to connect to the VPN is click on your network connections. And if you go all the way to the top, you can see right here, you have a new entry that's above all of your regular connections that says VPN. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna push connect. Now to test this, to make sure it's working, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna open up this PC and I have a network share right here. This is connected to my file server on my network. So if I click on this, there we go, we have access to my files. Now, this is being done currently over a hotspot from a phone, so I'm not actually on the same network as the rest of my network. If I were to actually take my computer right now and run down to Starbucks or go somewhere else, I'd be able to connect in exactly the same fashion. As you know, when things are easy to set up, usually they're not as secure. And that is the case with the PPTP protocol. Unfortunately, it was extremely riddled with security vulnerabilities when it was first released. The first revision of PPTP got a really bad reputation from being able to be exploited extremely easily. Fortunately though, Microsoft has actually gone through and they've created a new revision of the protocol and it's actually pretty secure. Unfortunately, it still has a bad reputation because honestly, first impressions mean a lot. Most system administrators won't even touch a PPTP VPN because of the initial problems that it had. However, now there still is a major problem with the PPTP protocol. And honestly, it comes down to your VPN is gonna be as strong as your password that you use to create it. So if you use a really simple password, then it's gonna be susceptible to attack. The PPTP protocol is susceptible to brute force attacks. And because of that, I would highly recommend using an extremely complicated password. And as long as you have a a really secure password, you should be okay. Some of the other issues that you have to think about is if you're using an iPhone as your hotspot, then you're simply not gonna be able to use this because Apple has blocked the PPTP protocol from being able to go through their phones. So there's unfortunately no fix to that. There was a fix earlier with a jailbroken phones, but even that doesn't work anymore. So in order to get this to work from a hotspot, it's gonna to have to be an Android phone. It's not gonna be able to work on an Apple phone. However, if you're connecting from a home internet connection to your office, you should be okay. You may have to enable VPN pass-through on your router, but you know, it should work fine. If this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.